So you already love BlazeMeter, and now you're going to love it even more. Welcome to BlazeMeter Continuous Testing, the next evolution of testing. BlazeMeter has always been known for performance testing, but before you run these tests today, you probably have to coordinate with other teams to ensure other test environments or APIs will not only be up and running, but also prepare to receive the increased load you're going to unleash as part of your performance testing. Now you can save time in coordinating all that because we've created a feature that enables you to create a mock of the service you're trying to hit as part of your test. But it's not really part of your testing scope. In other words, you don't care if that service is performing. You just care about receiving specific responses within a certain threshold so that your own tests can continue running and are not impacted by environment availability or poor environment performance. If you want to enrich your test with poor response times or bad data from those services not in your testing scope, you can also do that. All seamlessly as you're creating and configuring your tests in BlazeMeter. So we're now in BlazeMeter and we're looking at a previous test. So if we drill into some of the details of this test, um, we've got the, the combined test here. So the lines are the performance output. So in this case, we've got things like the virtual users that are run, response times, errors. And then these are the actual UI tests that we ran at the same time as the performance test. So if we looked at the check visa status and the visa payment, the, the, the dots on the screen, each of those equates to a test that ran and the response time of that test. So we can see that over the course of the test, as we loaded up the system, um, there's a range of responses for the UX test that we ran. Now, behind the scenes, what we're doing here is we're also talking to an API. So if I go to one of these UX tests and we click on it, what we see here is the responses over the period of the test for those particular ones. If we click on one of these tests, we have the screenshots. But if I scroll down, we actually have um, a call out to an API. So within the application, we're calling an API, which actually is here. So we, we had a slight delay there, but basically um, at that point, the application and the API were performing well. Now, let me explain a little bit about how the application is configured. So our digital banking application we're using for our demonstration here. Um, it's a, a Java application, has an access to a local database. It has access to remote APIs as part of the actual application itself. And one of those APIs is the Visa API. So during our testing, we're testing the application and the application itself is making a call to that Visa API to get data back from Visa. Visa. So we're trying to transfer money. So we're passing an account number and a value to get back a status. Now, what if that API were not there? Well, let me show you what that would look like. So we have a test here that's running where the API has been disabled. So if we go and look at our timeline report, we'll see the response times. Now, obviously, the API is external to the application, so we don't see an issue there. But if, if we look at some of these UX tests, so if I drink to one of these UX tests and we mouse over it, um, you'll see we get an error. And the error is because the API is offline. So the API is not responding. Now, we can also get further data down here on the response times. But how can we actually replace that API so we can carry on our testing when that API is not available? So let me show you how we can create a mock service. So we're now in our mock service and on the landing page, we have a video and tutorials that'll help you get started with creating a mock service. We're going to import a mock service. So as you can see at the top here, we can do things like Swagger. Um, we can use a HAR file, which is a recording you do inside a browser and also take input from things like Wiremock. So we're going to start with an import of a HAR file that I recorded. So I went into the browser and I hit some APIs and I saved that as a HAR file. And that's what we're now loading. Now that now creates this a mock service and we give it a name. So let's call this, this our test mock service. Now, if I expand it, you'll see there's some transactions. So these transactions have come from that input file. Uh, we can choose to then manage those. So perhaps we may want to keep some in the, what we're working with in the mock service. We want to move some to the left hand side so we don't need them. We may want to augment this mock service with existing transactions. So these ones down here are existing ones. So let me say I, I move those over into here. Now, at this point, we've got a very simple mock service that contains ones we've imported and also some that already existed. If I save this, we can then run this mock service. Now, what that means is 
when we run the mock services, we're standing up an instance of our, our mock service that we can then use for our testing. So this takes a few seconds. Um, when it's finished, what we'll have is an endpoint that's active on the network. You then reconfigure your application to point to that endpoint. And from that point on, all transactions for that particular endpoint will come to this mock service. So you can see that's now running. Here's our endpoint. So I'll go away and reconfigure my application to use this new endpoint. So I've reconfigured my environment to now point to this new endpoint. So if I go and log into that environment, now it's been reconfigured. And we go to that API. So we're going to go into the Visa part of the application. We're going to say we want to transfer $5 to that account. And we get back an approve status. Now, if I go and look at that mock service, what we can do here is we click on the show log. What we can see is the transactions that have been sent to this mock service. And what you'll see is um, there's my transaction. So that's the account number and the value. Um, there was a match. So it says match true. So we responded with this response. And based that response of 00, zero is mapped to be an approved. So we know our application is now working with this mock service. Now, what we can do at this point is we can then start working with the fact that our application is talking to our, our mock service. We could come in here. We could adjust what we call the think time, so the response time. So if I make this a large number and we click update, any responses to this mock service now are going to be delayed. So we wait for that mock service to finish updating, which takes a few seconds. We'll then go back to the application. So let's go back to the application. And let's do exactly the same thing. So I've changed nothing in the application. All I've done is basically change the response the uh, API will respond to. And what you're seeing here is we're now seeing a very large delay because basically we've introduced that performance delay. So what happened if I rerun my performance test? Let me show you. So we rerun our performance test with the API that's now performing badly or responding badly. So let me go and look at how that affects our reports. So what you can see here is, here's our performance report. Um, in our metrics, we can look at things like response time. So if we go look at response time of that API, you will see that spike. That was where we enabled this response time. So we let it run for a while and then we um, caused the performance issue by that delay in the API. Now, with the integration, we are integrated with our APM tool, so we could actually dig a bit deeper to understand you know, how were the back-end systems coping with the load. And as you can see, they were perfectly normal. So we know that it was the, the API that caused the problem. If I go and look at our, our UX tests, so if I look at the Visa payment one, this is what you now see. So as well as the poor response, also, our UX tests were also showing a poor, poor performance. So we've now introduced a performance issue. And if I drill into one of these UX tests, what we'll see is the actual test worked. It was just slow, so the actual test passed. But if I scroll down to the waterfall, you'll see here we had a large delay on that API. So we've introduced a delay into the API. We can now simulate poor performing APIs as well as you know, those with negative testing as part of our baseline um, performance testing using the mock test, mock services. So what we've shown throughout this demonstration is how you can accelerate your performance test execution cycles and enrich your performance tests using BlazeMeter mock services.